Hi, this is John Burry. I'm a Principal Consultant with Pivot Point Security. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me today to talk about network vulnerability assessments. The Maximum Assurance presentation series is intended to help organizations maximize the assurance that they re receive from the security assessment activities they conduct by standardizing the language and the methodologies and the way we communicate these issues. Also critical to that is making sure that key decision points are well understood. So, to that end, from a network vulnerability assessment, what is it? Most critical is the term vulnerability, right? And vulnerabilities are control weaknesses, and those most typically come from issues with patch management and configuration management. Second thing in this definition is the term systematic. Uh, network vulnerability assessments are conducted by network scanners, basically purpose-built computers running software, which is intended to actually be able to enumerate the systems that we're looking at. NVAs are a wonderful way to rapidly assess security posture, which is one of the reasons they're such a popular test. Uh, they can be run as a standalone, or very frequently they run as the first step in a penetration test. They're not without some issues. As we all know, they tend to generate false positives. Uh, if they're run with default settings, they'll often miss, often miss critical vulnerabilities. And lastly, they can generate a staggeringly large amount of data. So you have to be careful about the way you run them. For key components of an MVA, uh, scoping, discovery, port scanning, and vulnerability detection. We'll touch on each of those issues. Also, we'll talk about some of the new advanced techniques that have come out in the last couple of years. So what are the key decision points for a network vulnerability assessment? Uh, first and most critical is definitely scoping, right? What we want to do here is we want to make sure we understand what our objectives are, and we make sure that we're going to choose the subnets and systems necessary to provide the assurance we require or to achieve those objectives. Also, we want to make sure that the extent and rigor of our testing matches up with is the risk that we're, uh, the systems are subject to. If you're doing a lot of audit and compliance, there's really a lot of benefit to statistically sampling uh, a relevant cross-sectionary environment. Uh, this has a couple of advantages. Uh, first, what it does is it reduces the amount of data, uh, reduces the amount of time, and then what we like to do is actually run, uh, after we've done our mitigation activities, run a secondary confirmatory screen, and then what we can do is we can run that across uh, either the same scope or across a wider sampling to validate the efficacy of the mitigation. One of the oft overlooked uh, advantages to an NVA is it's an excellent way to detect, excuse me, to gauge the effectiveness of your incident detection and or incident response programs. Also assess your IPS. Uh, in order to do that, you have to be aware of one issue. Uh, scanners by default are set to maximize speed, which makes them very easy to detect, also very easy to block. So if you want to use your NVA as a mechanism to address and determine whether or not your security incident detection is good. Really what you want to do is run the scanner in a highly covert mode and then what you want to do is gradually decrement the evasiveness level until your activities are actually identified. From an IPS, I think best practice is to run your VAs with the IPS in place and the IPS uh, either whitelisted or removed. The reason is, is that that provides you with assurance of that the IPS is operating as intended. It will also provide you assurance that your security posture is sufficient in the event someone is able to either evade the um, IDS or in the event that your IDS actually fails. Uh, discovery phase, the critical decision point here is to make a determination on whether or not you're going black hat or white hat. Unless you are actively trying to obfuscate your IP ranges, a white hat tends to be a much better choice. From a port scanning perspective, right, most scanners in their default setting will only scan what we refer to as low ports or common ports, those 0 through 1024. This approach is going to save you a lot of time, but it will miss vulnerabilities. Uh, most importantly, it will miss those that might be critical relating to malware and backdoors is usually uh, they're assigned to higher level ports. The Vulnerability scans uh, also, by default, usually will actually only look at the TCP ports. We do recommend that you also look at UDP services at the same time. And if you're in a high-risk environment, or if you're scanning through a firewall, you might want to look at the flexibility your scanner has uh, to use, utilize some more advanced port scanning mechanisms uh, to ensure that you get high assurance levels from your testing. 
One of the key points of understanding about in the vulnerability detection is that a vulnerability scanner doesn't really know anything. Really, it's taking a series of educated guesses. And it's taking those guesses based on the information it receives back from your systems. So one of the things that we like to do is run our scanners in a more paranoid mode. What that allows us to do is our scanner will not make assumptions based on initial answers and fail to test for every known possible vulnerability. Another thing to remember is that vulnerability scanners are only as good as the library of signatures that it's loaded with. So make sure you use a high quality scanner. Also make sure that your scanner is appropriately updated. Lastly, with vulnerability detection, perhaps you don't want to detect vulnerabilities associated with things like denial of service. Sometimes we call them dangerous uh, checks. And the reason is, is that they can often disrupt a service or a system. So very often we just set it to flag them, but not to actively test them. In the last couple of years, we've seen some great new advances in vulnerability scanning. Uh, we've seen credential scans, content scans, and passive scans, three new capabilities. I'll touch on them each briefly. In terms of credential scans, really what the key here is that the scan is run with administrative privilege, which is a real game changer. And the reason is, is that because we're actually an admin on the box, we're no longer taking educated guesses. We're actually reading from the system's configuration, from example, the Windows registry. And what this allows us to do is not only be much more accurate, but it allows us to go much greater depth. We can actually look at things like the system logging settings, which you can't really do with a conventional vulnerability assessment. Another great advantage of this approach is that it allows you to benchmark your compliance against prevailing standards, like the payment card industry data security standards or the Center for Internet Security benchmarks. La last, it will cost you a little more, and it definitely takes more time to run a credential scan, but we believe in the vast majority of the times that that is more than offset by the reduction of false positives and the simplified remediation. Content scanning builds on the concept of credentialed scans. Uh, you're also still running with an administrative level of privilege, but what this allows us to do is actually look at what information is actually on the system. Does my system contain credit card data that might be subject to the payment card industry data security standard? Does it contain security numbers or customer records that might be subject to identity theft acts? So this gives us a very great way of reducing risk associated with failure to comply with these critical provisions. Lastly, and the newest of the capabilities, is the concept of passive scanning. As you may recall, we talked about that standard NVAs are active and that they're based on inquiry and response. The scanner asks a lot of questions and gets a lot of answers. In the process of asking those questions, on occasion it can actually knock down a service or even a system. Uh, this is acceptable in most environments, but if you're running a power plant or a bank trading floor, you might not run NVAs for this reason. We can now run NVAs in those types of environments without any additional risk of disrupting service. Uh, what the VA scan does now at this point in a what we refer to as a passive mode is it basically sniffs the traffic. And then for any services that are at actively communicating during the time that we're actually quote unquote scanning, uh, we can identify vulnerabilities associated with those services. Uh, this will definitely take a lot more time and it costs a lot more. However, it does have the advantage that we can gather assurance in areas where it was previously not feasible. So summing up, NVAs are a phenomenal tool in our security assessment arsenal. Uh, the key is just making sure that we're scoping it well and that we've configured the scanner optimally to achieve our objectives. If compliance or risk is an issue, take advantage of some of the newer features that we talked about, things like credentialed and content-based scans. And lastly, if you sample intelligently, you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of money. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the presentation. If we could be of any further help, please let us know.